Hello students. In this video, I'm going to take you through a Sage worksheet that contains uh, the code for Euler's method. Now, I recommend that you watch my first two videos on Euler's method. Um, one tact you can take is to watch this video first and go back and watch my introduction to the derivation of Euler's method, then my next video that runs you through the code of Euler's method, then come back and watch this one again after you've seen those two. So this could give you an overview. But um, you definitely want to watch this um, at some point after you've seen those two so you know what's going on. I'm going to assume that you already know that information in those first two videos. Okay, so we're going to um, numerically solve first order ODE. And um, it's really uh, an initial value problem is what we're solving here. So the ODE for um, this example is going to be y prime plus ty equals sine pi t. Um, this wouldn't be horrible. Uh, to, um, well, this would be a tough one to um, integrate um, manually, okay, because you'd have a, a e to the minus one half t squared times sine pi t. Um, so we're going to push this ty over to the other side and we're going to set this up for Euler's method because we're going to um, solve this problem numerically. So the rate function now, if we move the ty over to the right hand side, is going to be sine pi t minus ty. So I'm going to define my function f, which is going to be my rate function. It's going to be f of ty. And then I'm just going to return the right-hand side. Okay, so that's how the function works. Notice the colon and the indentation. So that means that this return statement is within the scope of this function. Now we're going to give an example of Euler's method. There may be more efficient ways to code up Euler's method. Um, I, just, I tried to code it in what I thought might be the simplest way to explain now, I already went through this code snippet in a previous video. I recommend that you go back and, and check out that video. I put the comments in here um, so you can check those out. These comments are a little more, uh, have a little more detail than the comments in my previous video, but you can check them out. Um, so uh, we're going to send in um, the initial value, the initial time, the final time, and the time step. Then um, we're going to have a time and dependent variable of uh, variables and we're going to initialize them with the t naught and y naught and then we're going to initialize our set of points th with the order pair t comma y and then we're going to build this list so remember while t is less than the final time this would be y is equal the next iterate is equal to the current iterate plus dt times the function the rate function that's up here I'll leave that so you can see it the rate function um, here that's from up here, okay? So you multiply that by dt, and then we do the next time step. Remember, this is t equals t plus dt, and remember that we are just overriding the y and t's. So at the first iterate, this is going to be y1, this is going to be t1, and then we're going to append that to our list. So now our list contains t naught, y naught, the next order pair is t1, y1. You keep marching along in this while loop until the time ticks off and hits the final time then you've, you're now out of the scope of the while loop and you're within the scope of the function and you're going to return that array of points. So we run the algorithm. Actually, let me do this. I will uh, hit shift enter and run that code. And then um, I will shift enter and run this function. Okay, so that's in my memory. So now I'm going to define the variable t. Um, my output will be the points equals, because remember, this the Euler code is returning points. It'll be Euler. My initial value is going to be 0. My initial time is going to be 0. My final time is going to be 3 times pi. And my time step is going to be 10 to the minus 1, which I can write as 1e to the minus 1. So I'm going to run that. That's going to be my Euler's code. my Euler code. Then I'm going to use the same sage function line. Um, that's because the point the points are coming back as a discrete list of points. So line will connect the line of points, and um, I'll make the color red and I'll call my axis labels T and Y. And then um, to that I'm going to overlay what's called a list plot, and that'll be the points. And the list plot will be these blue dots. So when I run this code, let's see how fast this runs. Boom, there it is. It plots my solution. This is what my solution's like. So the first iterate was zero. The next iterate was something a little bit above zero. The next iterate was here. That's the third. So that's the y3. 
at T3. This is Y4 at T4. So that's so this is so if you project down to the T axis, you're seeing the grid of points. And um, these are the entire grid of points, and that's what the list plot outputs. The red gives me this line, and it you know just makes it look nicer. Um, the solution it starts out, um, it's kind of like this, uh, almost like this earth kind of feel, right? This bell curve, but, you know, hitting with a, uh, multiplied by a sine. And so you have this negative exponential that's decaying your amplitude. And you get the periodicity of the um, periodic function, the trig function. Um, okay, so that's how Euler's uh, method works. Um, I do just want to point out quickly and I'll leave a link to this uh, Sage file, um, but uh, Sage does have a built-in um, Euler's method, and this is what it looks like. So you can pause the video and take a look at that, and I left the output there for you to examine. And then here's an example of how to run it um, with, uh, I left this function, those one minus x times y as the function, it's the input there, and you could check that out. So. Um, so here I'll, close, I'll collapse that data and you can pause and take a look and see what that looks like um, at your leisure. All right, good luck.